If there's one thing I love, it's encouraging nerdy tendencies in small children, so I was really excited about this latest commission. This piece is intended as a gift for a young Harry Potter fan named Ethan who happens to be a fellow Hufflepuff. Artistically, I was given a lot of free range with this project, so I was able to work with the client to get something that would make everybody super happy in the end. For this illustration, I decided to go with colored pencil. I think that's going to give me something that's a little closer to the look of the original cover art for the books. But of course, when you're hiring an artist for an original piece, you're hiring that artist for their work, not just a knockoff of somebody else's style. So I wanna to try to blend the original cover art of the books with my own personal style. One of the requests for this project though was to include the Hufflepuff colors. So the main design is definitely going to be focused on yellows and golds. And to portray Ethan himself, I'm again trying to do something that's kind of a blend of my own sort of style with the sort of very cartoony and exaggerated style of the cover art of the books. I don't want to go quite so surrealistic and very exaggerated from the cover art. I want it to be a little more identifiable as Ethan, but I am going to keep it pretty cartoony and young and fun to stay in that Harry Potter feel. So for the overall design, I want to kind of play with the idea of it being sort of Ethan's own personal crest and something of sort of a magical tome or manuscript feel. So I want most of the actual illustration to be sort of a vignette that is included within the outer shape of the Hogwarts crest. Even when doing a hand illustration like this, it's really easy to get a nice simple and symmetrical shape. I just folded a piece of paper in half and then on one side drew that side of the Hogwarts crest. Once you're happy with the shape, you can just cut it out while the paper is still folded in half. And then when you unfold it, you have made yourself a perfectly symmetrical custom stencil. So now I can just place my stencil down on a piece of heavy watercolor paper and I'm going to have the basic framework of my illustration already done. I decided to keep the background pretty simple. I don't want to overpower Ethan. That's kind of the whole point of this illustration. It's not a cover art where I'm trying to tell an entire story, but even then a lot of the Harry Potter covers were fairly simple. They just had sort of the key elements and characters. So I think this is still definitely gonna have a very similar feel. I just decided to do sort of a faded ombre from sort of a dark brown into those golds and yellows of a Hufflepuff with just a little bit of a green tint at the bottom because that's A, a natural obvious choice to fade from yellow, and B, it will sort of imply the ground since he is flying on a broom, it sort of implies to me that he is up in the air. So now that I sort of have the boundary of my image done, I can go ahead and start on the figure. I'm gonna keep the majority of the image within the framework of that crest, but I'm gonna allow the broomstick's handle to slightly extend past that. I'm hoping that'll give it kind of the feel of the trading cards that come in the chocolate frogs. So hopefully it'll feel just a little bit more alive than if it was just all with inside the crest and cut off everywhere that it would otherwise overlap that. And of course, down here along the bottom, to keep it personalized to Ethan, I'm going to write his name in a fancy banner. I'm purposely not keeping the typography perfect. I want it to be very hand done as if it was made onto some sort of a fancy scroll and very old school. I don't want it to look too muggle. So again, I am trying to keep this kind of close to my own style, but inspired by the Harry Potter cover art. So the way that I color and shade him in is going to be a little different from my normal, but still fairly close. And for instance, instead of the perfectly round glasses of Harry Potter, I'm doing details like keeping the shape of Ethan's actual glasses. And the part that was ridiculously time-consuming was doing this fancy ombre background. I definitely wanted there to be an overall sort of goldish feel, 
but I wanted there also to be a good bit of contrast. So this meant a lot of going back and forth with various colors to try and get a nice smooth transition. And of course, working the green in at the bottom is again to sort of try to imply that he is flying in the air on his broom. For the shading and coloring in of Ethan himself, I very much looked towards the book's cover art. And once I started getting the contrast level of his shading, that told me where I stood with the background on the crest, and I decided to amp that up just a little bit, but overall I was pretty happy with that gradient. Of course, the lining of the robes and his tie had to be Hufflepuff yellow. Which I think popped very nicely with the darker tones of the rest of the robe. And just how I have the broomstick going outside of the frame of reference of the crest, I also am sort of having his legs kind of dangle outside of that as well, so that they're hidden kind of behind the banner. Again, just sort of playing with depth and space to try and create an illusion of movement and life. The line art of the cover arts was not quite as crisp as I usually do with my Sharpie pen, but again, I wanted this to still feel very much like my style with just inspiration by the Harry Potter books. So I stuck with sort of my normal pen, but I didn't do quite as much outlining as I normally would. I kept it just a little bit softer, not so harsh. And of course I used the same pen to get the narrower, more detailed sections of the typography, but then I broke out the regular Sharpie to get the bigger sections. And then as the piece de resistance and the final touch, I used this gold metallic paint to fill in the border of the crest. I love old books and manuscripts that have those fancy gilded sections for highlights. I just have always been fascinated by that, and I think that's a true sign of a really ancient book. So I, of course, had to include that. And no custom commissioned piece of artwork is complete without a signature. I am super happy with how the gold turned out. It's not overly flashy, but it's a nice touch, I think.
overall, I'm pretty happy with the finished product. I think I stayed pretty true to my own style with some definite nods to the original cover art. But of course, my favorite part are the gold metallic accents. I like that it sort of implies a illuminated manuscript with some really fancy gilt edgings. I think that really brings out that magical tome feeling and of course, a little bit of sparkle never hurt anybody, but this isn't super duper blingy and overpowering to the rest of the illustration. What do you think? Is this a great gift for a young Potterhead or what? Let me know in the comments down below what your Hogwarts house is. Have a beautiful day, and I'll see you next time.